Megan boils as a lie is crudely told by Harry. Every road is damaged, I worry that Harry who's a champion for mental health, is a poor advert for the many benefits of therapy. So there was a scenario that was once offered by a TV stream to a person who seemed to experience conflict with other people, almost as a matter of routine, and the example was something like this alright. So just imagine that you wake up in the morning, and you start a fight with your spouse, and then you take a shower and you go to work, and there you have a confrontation with a co-worker, and then at lunch you get into an argument with the drive through person working at McDonald's, and then you go home, and you have some kind of conflict with your child. Now at some point it has to occur to you that you are the common denominator here. It is not all the people around you who are the problem, it's you. Now how many times have we heard from various people including staff who worked for Megan? that Megan was difficult or that she was rude. Now from the employees that she allegedly bullied to the team who worked with her on a series of commercials for the Canadian clothing label. Ex-friends and family members have all chimed in, and they agree that this is not this kind and sweet person that she tries to convince us she is. I mean how many people have to say the same thing before we start to believe them? Through Harry's book Spare and the leaks of content within, it we already know that Prince William has joined the chorus of voices who find Meghan Markle to be absolutely abrasive, rude and difficult. But apparently, that is not what we were supposed to take away from all of this. Instead we were supposed to focus on Harry's claim that William physically attacked him, broke a necklace, and that poor Harry ended up on the floor in the dog bowl. Well I guess the account has a whiff of truth about it, and it's got that whiff, because if my brother had done the things to our family that Harry has done to his, I'm sure that you know what I'd knock him to the floor too. Straight out of the supporter playbook Harry blames the media for William's assessment of Meghan Markle. I can't tell but wonder if Harry included all of the staff members who were bullied as the media. Was William right? Well if what Harry says is true no, he probably shouldn't have attacked his brother. I'll give him that. But it's easy to understand why he would have done something like that far from getting sympathy for physically assaulting Harry. What this excerpt has told us all along is that the feud between the two of them boils down to this woman. It has nothing to do with Harry and Meghan wanting to be half and half out royals. And it also has nothing to do with anybody planting stories. This is a story about a brother who warned his little brother against marriage so quickly and he didn't manage to keep his opinions to himself about his view of his sister-in-law. And there's another side to this, and there is one that we're never going to hear. I think we all know exactly why William would say those things about Meghan, but it would be lovely if we could hear it straight from him. And anyway, I support the palace's stance in all of this. Do nothing, say nothing. Just let Harry and Meghan destroy themselves. And now I'm just waiting for Harry to blame his family's dislike of Meghan on racism. I mean even if abrasive and difficult and rude are not exactly racial slurs, we already know Harry and Meghan are going to claim they are William must be a racist, because there is nothing wrong with Meg and she's a perfect angel. People only dislike her because of her skin tone. Because it's half a shade darker than her ginger husband. People who wanted to never see Harry and Meghan back in the UK. Well I think your desire is very close to being a reality. I don't see any way that these two men will ever make peace again. They would both need to live for probably a thousand years, and even that's doubtful. If it were my brother I would think putting an ocean between us would be an excellent idea. And also Prince Harry has every right to feel upset and angry that he suffered this supposed physical assault at the hands of his brother. Any physical fight in the home in my opinion is unacceptable. For one brother to hit, another and Harry accuses William of grabbing him so hard that he got knocked to the floor. It cannot be encouraged whatever the provocation was. But still there is another aspect of this incident that left me a lot more confused. Harry's claim that he spoke to his therapist right after the episode. Now I thought to myself, I find this very bizarre. Why did Harry not immediately go to his wife Meghan? I would imagine that most couples if their clothes would seek comfort with each other after such an It also seemed very interesting to me that apparently Harry was on speed dial to a therapist. When Meghan had claimed in their tell all Oprah interview that the royal family's palace officials did not allow her to seek mental health treatment when she was feeling suicidal because according to Meghan, it wouldn't be good for the institution. But perhaps the most bizarre thing of all, 
I can't understand why any good therapist would be acting as a comfort blanket in this way. Somebody to offer consolation and reassurance whenever something horrible happens. I mean honestly a therapist is not typically the first person that you turn to when life gets tough. Now I guess it's possible that Harry had one of his regular therapy sessions booked on the day that the supposed attack occurred. Now in that case, of course I understand that Harry and the therapist would have discussed what had just occurred. But if Harry was actually treating his therapist to some type of first line of defense, to me that is a big red flag. Therapy is not supposed to be a kind of crisis management. In fact if therapists are misused in this way, they have the potential to make mental health problems a lot worse not better. Because the thing about it is no therapist out there. I don't care how good they are, they cannot be there all the time for all of their patients. And it also stops people from drawing on their own resources and developing more appropriate sustainable ways of coping. It's important for therapists to always set firm boundaries with all of their patients, and the importance of this is usually impressed upon them in their training. Sessions typically follow a fixed routine on regular dates, and usually a good therapist is not going to share their personal number. This is going to protect the patient as well as the doctor. Everybody needs someone they can call an emergency. But it's not supposed to be a therapist. And I know that movies have given people all kinds of false ideas about what therapy is supposed to be. But all good therapy has a goal. And it's supposed to have a finish line. It's supposed to heal emotional pain. And it's supposed to work towards recovery. If it just goes on forever. And ever. If it never reaches a resolution. It could be doing some damage because it prevents people from moving towards independence and responsibility. Now in the privacy of the therapist's office, patients are supposed to be as immature and self-centered and selfish as they need to be. But that is a tool the psychotherapy utilizes. It's a method of reaching far back into childhood trauma to treat the pain that has been there for a lifetime. But in their everyday life, patients are expected to develop different coping strategies. They really need a whole support network of people who are there for them friends, family members, and they also need to learn to reflect on daily events before they run to their therapist and spill all the beans. It's true that talking to a therapist is not always easy. It's supposed to sometimes be painful and difficult. The job of a therapist is not always to provide comfort. A good psychologist or psychiatrist or therapist is not going to just sit there nodding yes all the time and cooing. No they're supposed to be posing some pretty challenging questions. And their job is really to guide the patient to search within themselves for the answers. Now I will say there's an interesting dilemma that's faced by private therapists. That would mean most of the therapists in the US and also the ones in the UK who are not funded by the NHS. So their patients are responsible for providing them a good living. Wealthy celebrity patients often pay very well. But good therapy is supposed to be working towards a goal. Which means an end to the money. And I can't help but worry that this incident shows that Prince Harry who has set himself up as this champion for mental health is a very poor example of therapy. And that's sad because it's really the perfect tool for men like him ex-servicemen with young families who are approaching middle age with a lot of trauma in their past. From a generation and a culture where males especially were expected to repress their problems and just deal with all of their pain and silence. So men like that may take a look at Harry and think that therapy has not done him a lot of good and they're justified in that. Harry appears to be trapped in his past. It seems like he cannot escape the heartache of his parents' divorce and the passing of his mother and also the perceived slides of his family going around in circles instead of moving forward. So anybody out there with empathy for William and Harry Young men the country has known since they were just little boys is going to feel that making the fights in their relationship public can only damage their destroyed relationship even further. So where is the resolution where is the healing Harry is a horrible advertisement.